This is the CMO of GaiaX, Vasily Orfano. This is our newest podcast series. GaiaX is a newly aspiring, rising European association, and together with you, we can develop a new concept of data infrastructure ecosystem based on the values of openness, transparency, sovereignty, and interoperability. Join us today at GaiaX and be part of this technological ecosystem. This is the uh, CEO Gaia X podcast series with uh, Francesco Bonfilio. Uh, Francesco, uh, regarding the the labeling framework, uh, the latest labeling criteria that we will be releasing as well, um, is this another way for further compliance? Let's put it this way, and um, increasing the overall transparency and minimizing this monopoly, let's put it this way, or could it actually um, hurt Gaia X because it would be difficult to enforce it? How do you see it? How do you foresee it in terms of implementing um, a label, labeling framework? Yeah, the labeling uh, framework of Gaia X is going to simplify uh, the adoption of cloud. Our objective is to simplify the adoption, increase it, uh, make the transparency, the controllability of services, the core of the trust. And uh, and therefore, the answer to your, to your question is absolutely not. And uh, to explain this better, think about the compliance framework of GAIA-X. So what it takes to be GAIA-X compliant made of two major bricks. One is the trust framework. And the other is the labeling framework. So the trust framework is a a set of components through which anybody will be able to publish a service, um, making it trustable, uh, trusted. In other words, making it transparent and controllable. So anybody will be able to publish a service that shows exactly how the service is made. Let's make an example that your service is a car, and uh, we always use this example. The, the trust framework will make sure that everybody can see that the color of that car. So you can clearly see that you have a yellow car, a blue car, or a red car, because the trust framework make it transparent and let you decide what car you want. The labeling framework does a filtering on, on those characteristics, such that if in Europe or in France, everybody wants to buy red cars, you will simply search for a red car label, and this will filter all the services, all the cars that are uh, red. So the trust framework, make sure you have service attributes. The labeling framework, make sure you can select easily the attribute value you want for your service. It's your choice. So of course, The trust is compulsory. Everybody must be trusted. Every car must have a color. Otherwise, nobody will buy it. But we are not forcing everyone to buy red cars. So the labeling is not compulsory. But if you want to use a service within the public administration of uh, your specific country or for the healthcare system or for the banking system, and you recognize that in those ecosystems, you want to make sure that certain levels of regulations, like the GDPR, for example, or certain levels of security as defined by the uh, EUCS, which is a new standard that is going to be defined by the European agency ENISA, but as well the existing standards like Segnum Cloud in France or uh, C5 in Germany. So if you want to make sure that all those many, 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 many rules, so difficult to be verified, often verified on paper by human beings, if you want to make sure that your service uh, uh, adhere and comply to those rules, this is the simplicity that the compliance framework of GAIA-X provides. Because on one side, the trust framework will decompose that service into atomic elements that can be verified. On the other side, the labeling framework will filter out exactly what you want. So you will be able to buy a service uh, quickly browsing through the characteristics 
of a label, which are an extremely complex ensemble of attributes and values that you will not have to search anymore. And you will not have to trust the provider because the verification will be done by the GAIAX framework on the service itself. So it's a completely new paradigm that simplifies the trust and makes it uh, visible uh, uh, in a snapshot, basically. So the labeling are going to simplify our lives and are going to be objective. Uh, and like I said before, if you want to buy a, a vegan food, you look at the label on the can and you, you realize it's vegan. There is a vegan symbol. Then if you go in the detail, you see many ingredients and you realize that those ingredients are all vegan compliant. The label is vegan. The ingredients is the set of the attributes of the service I was saying before. Now, imagine to make it, it totally digital, totally verified by technology. It's fantastic. So it's even more reliable. That's what GAIAX is doing, applied to the technology services and to the cloud in particular. Fra Francesco, one year ago, um, basically, uh, GAIAX started off. Uh, today, there is a lot of progress made with the uh, Lighthouse projects. Um, that are aiming to implement the GAIAX standard. Could this actually mean that we are improving or enhancing in a way the business impact that we would like to, to provide? Yes, we are improving uh, uh, necessarily because the GAIAX initiative, like I said at the beginning, uh, GAIAX is an association. So typically associations do not produce any uh, business products or service. And that's in fact what we do. We do not uh, provide, we do not develop any business product or service. We are developing this framework, which will be totally open and uh, can be adopted by anyone to make their services GAIAX compliant, to make their data interoperable, et cetera. But how to do this change, how, how to make this change in the world, in the real world? The only way to do it is through real business services. And that's what GAIAX is doing. So we have a constellation of hubs, regional hubs, that group together members of different countries. So we have, you know, 16 hubs, two of which are out of Europe, by the way. Each hub is working on their specific country or region needs, deciding uh, how to change those um, countries, creating common data spaces. The common data spaces is the objective of the GAIAX project. So we, are, we want to develop these uh, you know, new generation of data infrastructures in order to start sharing the data. And sharing the data, we want to enable data spaces, which are the digital representation of an ecosystem. So you can imagine that GAIAX is developing data spaces in the world of car manufacturing, data spaces in the world of healthcare, data spaces in the world of agriculture, and on and on and on. But if these were just academic project, projects or research and development, development initiatives, we wouldn't produce an impact in the business. Instead, we are seeking for those that we call lighthouse projects, which are real projects developed by real companies in the market that constitute themselves into real independent consortium to build real services that is that are going to change their industries. This is what is happening with projects like Catena X that groups together Daimler, BMW, Volkswagen, Bosch, Siemens, Deutsche Telekom, and many others to revolutionize the world of car manufacturing and automotive through common data spaces. The same is happening in the agriculture data space with a project called uh, AG Data Hub. Uh, uh, the same is happening with Iona X in the world of uh, tourism and uh, um, and traveling uh, with companies like Amadeus and many others. And the same applies to all the uh, all the lighthouse projects I was mentioning before. So in this way, and by the end of the 2022, uh, you will see the results. We are uh, aiming to develop real GAIAX services in the market 
that will create real GAIA-X marketplaces that will make GAIA-X visible to the end users, to the market. In such a way, the market will start asking for GAIA-X services because they are better, because they are more controllable, because they provide for a better data exchange and on and on and on. In this way, we want to create a market demand and the market demand will ask for new GAIA-X services. And at that point, the market will drive. In other words, service providers will develop GAIA-X compliant services because uh, service users will ask for them and service users will ask for GAIA-X uh, uh, services because they recognize they are more reliable, they are more trusted. And uh, if that happens, and this is the objective for 2023, we will see GAIA-X you know, start in the snowball effect that I'm hoping uh, will, will happen soon. So an effect where a digital disruption becomes uh, visible and everybody wants it. Uh, at that point, the work of the association will be supporting the snowball, but the snowball will become bigger and bigger and will revolutionize the role that uh, Europe has in the digital economy, which unfortunately is very, very small. And that's why we are doing what we are doing. We want to change the role of Europe in Europe and, uh, and uh, at the global market level. Francesco, with this uh, market demand that you are discussing, um, is, is, would it be a result, let's put it this way, of a federation services, th this specific pillar? And how is this connected with uh, GXFS, the project itself? Well, GXFS is an acronym that, acronym that stands for GAIA-X Federation Service. We have several GXFS projects. We have a German GXFS, we have a French GXFS, and soon we may have new countries doing their own GXFS projects. So GXFS is a way through which we uh, collect, let me say, not directly, but through these uh, public tenders, we collect some money from countries like France, Germany, and others that want to support the GAIAX initiative to uh, develop the components of the GAIAX framework I was describing before. So see the GAIAX framework like a box of Lego uh, pieces. So the Federation Services is the ensemble of all these pieces of different colors through which you can build a house, you can build a car, you can build a horse, you can build whatever you want. So the Federation Services are those that ser <coughs> serves to uh, control the identity of a service, to uh, verify the compliance of a service, to search and find a service in a catalog, and uh, to define a registry of all the service uh, trusted anchors. So those entities that are used to verify the correctness of the identity of an element of the service and, and, and on and on and on. So we can decompose the GAIAX framework down in too many, many Lego pieces. This is what the GXFS projects are doing. What uh, the GXFS uh, service will do uh, will, uh, will be what the Lighthouse projects and those real projects in the market need to make their service GAIAX compliant. So this will produce a change in the market and will produce a change that, like I explained before, will be largely driven by the development of common data spaces. Now, a common data space is basically a space where many participants decide to group together in a federation. So they join the dots across themselves to share data across each other. Why they do that? Because exchanging data one another, they can obtain more information of the ones they have from their own data. And what is the difference is that with more information, you can improve your product. Now, a federation is this mechanism through which every participant get some value out of the data of the other participants and in a very collaborative, cooperative way, they build something better for the common good of everybody. More data, less cost, more accuracy, bigger value. This is what the Lighthouse projects are building. This is what GAIAX is promoting. And in order to make it happen, we need a new generation of data infrastructures where people will rely uh, on and will be 
feeling good putting their data on. So it's a chicken and the egg. You cannot create data economy if you do not have trusted platforms. Gaia X has got an X at the end. A letter X, you can see on the top of the X, the data spaces. At the bottom of the X, you see the data infrastructures. So the federation services are, are in the middle of the X and they are the glue or the Lego, the Lego pieces that can be used to create data spaces so to exchange data across different participants in a federation and to connect together existing different existing technology infrastructures to build trusted infrastructures. So you see the full picture here. There cannot be data spaces without trusted infra infrastructures and there cannot be data economy without data spaces. We are trying to put it all together and uh, this is the only initiative uh, like that in Europe, but not just in Europe. And it's the most concrete attempt to change the data economy, touching on the real nerve system uh, and going to change all the elements that have not made it possible so far. And the problem is why this has not happened so far. And, and the answer is simple. It, it's not a lack of technology. It's the lack of mechanisms that provide the necessary trust and the necessary um, let me say, uh, ability to exchange data that has not been provided so far by the existing technology. This is what Kayaks is doing. And finally, as a as a, an overall, let's say, framework of, of our discussion, you have been um, discussing many times about the five-year plan, uh, moving from the inception year to the adoption year, and then moving on to the next years. So where do we currently stand in terms of the adoption year, which are the main milestones that we would say that we can enumerate, and which are the next steps that we still need to fulfill by the end of the year? Okay, last year, 2021, uh, was the setup year. So it was the inception or setup where we defined what GAIA-X is. So all I've been talking about was defined during 2021, and we are continuing with the definition of the requirements uh, to some extent. But the main elements of the GAIA-X framework were defined during 2021. This enabled uh, this year, 2022, as the, as the year of adoption. So what we are doing in the year of adoption is the development of these components that constitute the GAIA-X framework in order to make them adoptable and adopted by those lighthouse projects that are developing the first generation of GAIA-X services in the market. So the objective of the adoption year is by the end of 2022 to have the compliance framework of GAIA-X up and running and made available to anyone uh, who wants to adopt it and have, by the end of this year, uh, the first uh, real services implemented in the market. Next year is the growth year. So what I mean by growth is that in 2023, if we succeeded to develop the first marketplaces of GAIAX services, in the market in 2022. Next year, if just half of our members develop or use one GAIAX service, the change will become substantial because we, we already have more than 330 members today. So you can imagine that we have the largest and most important companies, but as well as small, medium business. And if all of them, again, develop or use uh, one or a few GAIAX services, we will start to have concrete marketplaces of GAIAX services in the market. And I'm expecting the market to start creating demand and the providers start developing services. And this will create this virtuous circle I was talking about before. The objective of, of a five years plan is to fill the gap we have today in Europe, which is uh, important to remind. Europe now owns land less than um, 4% of the overall data economy. And uh, why? We have explained why. Uh, we miss the level of trust we need in order to trigger data economy. 
but as well, uh, we, we need to develop something new in order to make it possible. But if we build something new, and this will create a new leveling of the play field, what I'm expecting is that by 23 and 25, so in the next three years, we will see many, many more players developing IX services, developing distributed instead of hyper-concentrated uh, uh, infrastructures, developing trusted services and triggering a new debt economy that will hopefully increase the euro position in the overall debt economy from this very small uh, 4%, 5% into a more decent you know, 20, 30% and possibly, just thinking about Europe, more than 50% of the European market. This is the objective of GAIA-X without changing the rules, without forcing any, you know, protectionist kind of uh, legislation, which is, this is totally out of our scope, but instead playing in the real competitive uh, world. So building something competitive because it is necessary, nobody does it, and everybody wants it that's what we uh, we are, we aim to do and uh, the five years plan uh, will uh, will realize in our hope and uh, today i mean uh, this year 2022 and next year i go are going to be the crucial ones because these will be the years where you will see the paper of gaia x coming true stay tuned because this is going to be interesting Francesco, and as a, as a closing, um, Gaia X has been increasing steady uh, throughout the year, and a lot of members have um, actually um, shown interest to join uh, Gaia X. We've recently hit a record of 350 members to date, and our members come from different uh, corners of the world, A and B, uh, they're much different companies. We have big companies, multinational companies, uh, smaller companies, startups, SMEs, medium level, uh, even smaller acad acad uh, companies, associations as well, research centers, and so on and so forth. What would be um, your let's say, call to action to all these potential members that may not have uh, the resources, the skills, the money to even compete uh, with the bigger companies of, of the association that are part of at this time? Well, first of all, uh, you have to join because this is a place where you can, uh, <clears throat> you can uh, have an opportunity to speak up at the same level of anyone else. So I can proudly say that our organization has got 70% of uh, the members representing small medium uh, enterprise, which is the, the economic fabric of Europe. So you can imagine that for a startup or for a small medium company, sitting at the table of any large company with the same voice, with the same right to propose ideas, uh, with a unique opportunity to uh, join consortiums that are going to develop real projects, is a pretty unique uh, opportunity. There is no other place uh, in Europe where this is happening. If you think about it, GAIA-X then, um, like I explained before, is also uh, leveraging a constellation of regional hubs, each of which is extremely strongly connected to the local government. Why? Because they are proposing projects that are in line with the digital transformation needs of that country as defined by the strategy of those governments. Putting this all together means that you, as a small company, as a startup, or as a large company, need to be at the table of GAIA-X for two reasons. One is that GAIA-X is shaping your future. You're being a provider or you're being a user your future, if we, if we are successful, is going to be ruled by the rules that we are defining and controlled by the technology framework we are developing. So you better be part of the game <clears throat> or you can just wait and see what happens. But we are opening the doors to anybody. Second is that we are creating a unique ecosystem where large and small ones from many countries can bring ideas and participate in consortium to build real projects, find the interest of government and uh, 
local uh, economy players, so a unique business opportunity. So we are not just, uh, like I said before, we are not an academic think tank. We are making things happen through real projects made by real company, through real consortium, and we are open to anybody. We have very strong rules that allow only one participant for any working group in any context for any company. So you being a small company will have the same right of uh, another large company. So th th there is a unique opportunity for small companies to drive the standards we are, we are defining that we hope, and if we are successful, this will be the case, are going to rule the way you deliver and use services in Europe. And to be part of uh, uh, tables where these uh, rules can be early adopted to develop the, the new generation of industrial and public services that will change our economy. So <clears throat> the only thing we ask is a subscription fee, which is, which is, by the way, proportional to the revenues of a company. So we start from, you know, very small fees <clears throat> in order to have um, everybody capable to contribute according to their capabilities. And uh, we believe that this is the only way to uh, to change the world for the better. So the reason is, you want to change the world together with us, do it. If not, you can hope we are not successful or you can hope that we will be successful and what we are doing will fit your, your offering or your needs. But if you want to change it with us, be part of our association. We are open to anyone. We are welcoming everyone and you will have the same chance and the same opportunity of large ones. No differences. Thank you very much, Francesco. It has been a pleasure having this discussion with you and uh, we would like to engage you, if you may, for our next podcast series, uh, which is going to establish uh, the um, CEO series uh, for this year um, under your leadership as well. We're really happy to, to have the opportunity to work with um, leaders that, in fact, um, uh, move hearts and minds. This is quite difficult, especially in the IT sector. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for your time today and hope we see you again in our next GAIAX podcast series. Thank you and look forward. <laughs>